Sharpening of Circular Saw Blades We are not going to discuss manual sharpening methods in this video because in such cases the quality is quite poor due to inaccurate indexing and tooth-to-tooth -to -tooth inconsistency. These problems would cause rough cutting and a shortened life of your saw. Instead, we use a new digital indexing technique for the workpiece, the circular saw, and CNC shuttle movement for the grinding wheel. We are going to discuss the methods of sharpening, the original hardware and CNC control system. There will be time stamps in the description of the video. Let's compare two different methods of sharpening. The most obvious would be linear movement of the grinding wheel parallel to the workpiece's axis, which is easier to visualize due to its simplicity. You may also install the indexer on any machine tool with a linear table. It could be your regular surface grinder or even a milling machine. The video shows the installation of the indexing head on the table of our Rockwell tool grinder. Its original manual feed handle has been replaced by a NEMA 34 stepper motor. The main disadvantages of this method are The table's linear guides are exposed to the abrasive dust which translates into excessive wear. Each shuttle cycle, back and forth movement, requires the drive chain to reverse twice. In our case that leads to noticeable wear of the key joint which links the timing wheel and the drive shaft. Another disadvantage is the excessive mass that needs to be moved back and forth, table's weight could exceed 100 pounds. This method requires periodic dressing of the grinding wheel because it forms the tooth profile. The side effect of regular dressing is the reduced lifespan of the wheel. The alternative method would be radial movement of the grinding wheel toward the workpiece's axis. In order to minimize the harmful impact of abrasive dust, we decided to avoid any linear movements. Our grinding spindle acts like a cradle, it is mounted on a stationary shaft via bronze bushings. This allows it to freely roll sideways with respect to its mounting shaft. The spindle's housing is linked to a specially designed eccentric mechanism driven by a NEMA 23 stepper motor. One full revolution of the motor causes the entire assembly to roll full swing from one side to another. A proximity sensor makes sure that the eccentric always returns to its original position, called home. The sensor sends signals to microcontroller, as well as turns on the visible light for operator. In order to reduce expenditures related to the consumption of the grinding wheels, we decided also to incline the grinding wheel plane as well with respect to the vector of its actual movement, about 10 degrees. That allows to perform the process of grinding with just a tip of the wheel, meaning a point contact versus a classic line contact. This method not only makes dressing of the wheel unnecessary, but also allows for the usage of narrow disc wheels, which fall into the least expensive category of cut-off wheels. Note that those wheels are widely available, monolithic, and shatterproof. Also they maintain grinding capability not only at periphery but through their entire structure. High Speed Steel HSS, versus Carbide Teeth Nowadays carbide saws have become very popular. However, they have advantages only while being brand new. You may even enjoy cutting wood along with the embedded nails. Very few people bother to sharpen a used carbide saw because it is easier to buy one brand new. However, that works only as long as there is access to cheap overseas manufacturing. And, alas, nothing good lasts forever. If we compare the real expenditures, including the overall number of resharpenings, the HSS saws appear to be much more cost-effective, meaning more practical. We are putting aside some specific applications where the tungsten carbide tooth is a must. For most ordinary people a carbide saw becomes inoperable not because of excessive wear but rather a broken tooth, which eventually leads to increased load on the next tooth until it causes a domino effect. In contrary, under normal conditions it is almost impossible to break a century-tested HSS tooth, unless you hit a nail, while the number of resharpening is really high. The limitation is caused by the necessity of setting the saw at some point. CNC Control System 
Our system is based on our favorite Atmega 328 microcontroller. The PCB of our own design includes a four-digit display, voltage regulator, and classic DB25 connectors. The latter have been chosen because we consider soldering to be the most reliable method for electric connections. This old-fashioned technology also allows for easy rewiring. We don't use the most popular power supply units, despite their convenience. We came to conclusion that their internal frequency is close enough to the pulses generated by the drive units which power the stepper motors. Instead we use a classic power transformer. It may sound like outdated but in fact it proved to be absolutely reliable. Our favorite console has a 10-inch by 14-inch faceplate while being 6-inch deep. Software Development of our own software gave us an opportunity to implement the most advanced features. We are planning to make a separate video devoted to our software structure. Now let me just briefly mention a few basic principles. 1. It makes little sense to write codes without first creating a flow chart. In fact writing codes is the easiest part. About 90% of our time we spend on revealing and fixing numerous conflict situations, rather than writing codes. 2. We never use time delays. Instead our flow chart simply keeps the processor busy by doing other useful things. Let's compare that with a situation in which there is a line of people trying to fill an application in an imaginary office. Usually a receptionist would passively wait until a customer completes his application. While a smarter solution would be wasting no time and switching to another customer in order to fill the time gap. 3. We never use libraries. Of course using a library makes programming easier, however there is a hidden price to pay. Usually the creators of those libraries don't have austerity in mind meaning they don't bother to follow the rules mentioned above. Our austerity-based philosophy allows us to use a cheap and widely available microcontroller to flawlessly operate up to 5-axis CNC machines. The very same controller allows us to grind helical surfaces, sharpen end mills, hole saws, operate the milling and surface grinding machines. And we are not talking here about our 5-axis automatic welding machines, as well as curved surface sanding machines which implement our teach-in technology. Once again we are asking our devoted subscribers to have patience. Due to limited resources we cannot move faster. Your feedback would help us in prioritizing our next projects.